Dr. Kirsten Banks, thanks very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. You're an astrophysicist. Yes. We're here at a launch with uh, TikTok on a STEM channel uh, here in Australia, about 500 uh, contributors uh, to that. Uh, and you cover obviously space and astrophysics. Yes, the um, whole universe. And look, you've got your own uh, other channels as well. I won't, I mentioned that we were on uh, YouTube more uh, otherwise. But look, it is a great medium, uh, TikTok, into the message of, of space and yeah. science as well, and obviously STEM. Maybe some questions here on how you got into it, and then also the content, how, you, how much thinking goes into the content as you produce it. Of course. Well, I joined TikTok in 2020 when I couldn't do my usual science communication in person anymore and I was Got buzzing it. to talk to people about space and my boyfriend at the time was like, please talk to someone else about space, go try TikTok. <laughs> uh, and it was a great challenge to figure out ways to talk about these massive, huge things in space, these really complex topics condensed down into 60 seconds at the time. But nowadays, I have more room to breathe. I can post videos for much longer and put a lot of thought into the content that I make out there because I love sharing in people's curiosity of space in the universe and being able to give them more than just the headlines and give them exciting things to share with their friends and be like, hey, I learned something new today. Let me share with that. It is a, it's a key challenge within science, isn't it, in terms of the science communications. Mm. Uh, do you find that you're learning along the way as well? You're allowed to sort of pick out areas and go, okay, I can dive into that and, and learn a bit more within the intricate details of it and, and then turn that into a message? Absolutely. I love learning on TikTok as well. It's a place where I get to learn really interesting things like about frogs or cats. <laughs> Just lots of really weird things. It's great. Um, it's not just about me teaching people about space, but it's about all of us learning together. And even though I'm a doctorate in astrophysics, I will always be learning every single day of my life, and that's the best thing to have. Uh, one quick, this, this is not your day job now. I imagine you are a practicing astrophysicist. Uh, I do both. So I'm a science okay. communicator half-time and also a lecturer at Swinburne University half-time too. Nice. Uh, and I suppose the, the audience that you have, uh, I won't go into the numbers, but you're also, on, as I mentioned, on other channels as well. How do you find that feedback uh, as it resonates, but also some of the comments and the feedback that you get from the audience uh, and the dem demographics as well, as well. Any insights or observations there generally? It generally tends to be around the, the Gen X sort of people, yep. um, a lot of men as well, but I'm trying to get more into getting young women into, excited into space and wanting to do STEM careers because we belong here too and it's amazing just to share in people's curiosity. Being curiosity isn't discriminatory. One quick message, STEM uh, and getting uh, young women into STEM as well, particularly from a young age. Any, any message there, uh, what got you into space uh, as, in terms of what was that trigger for you? Yeah, the trigger for me was actually coming down to Sydney and going to the IMAX theatre just around the corner from right. here and we saw a documentary about the Hubble Space Telescope and that moment, facilitated by my science teachers in about year 9, year 10, was really that moment that clicked for me. Like, wow, space is cool, I want to study yes. space. So it's those opportunities given by our teachers and people we learn from that really can make a huge difference for young people. And Dr. Carr, we'll be interviewing him as well, uh, made mention of Australia's uh, invention of the Wi-Fi, but also the connection to black hole research as Absolutely. well. Uh, and you, and uh, you've obviously done some content on that as well. Yep, have a great video yeah. you can watch. Well, what, is the, what is the story? Uh, we'll also try and get the link into the show notes as well. But yeah, what's kind of the background there for you? The background there is that uh, scientists at CSIRO were looking at black holes and because of how black holes bend space and time around them, signals from black holes would come at different times. Kind of like how if you have a signal inside your home, it'll bounce off all of your furniture, all of your walls and get to the receiver at different times. And so these scientists realized that using Fourier transforms to collate information from black holes coming at different times, they could use that technology for Wi-Fi and to transmit internet via wireless transmission and effectively too. Nice. If only the speeds could be a bit faster. One last thing, uh, we're going to be doing some sessions on space medicine, uh, space uh, medicine for earthlings as well. Uh, have you done anything on uh, space medicine and earthlings in, uh, in space? No, that's something ah, that's very interesting go. to me. Okay. I'd love to watch more of your content to learn more about it. Beautiful. Uh, well, look, Dr. Kirsten Banks, thank you so much. You're a TikTok creator, a science communicator. Thank you very much. We're at the launch of the STEM channel for TikTok uh, here in Australia. But thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.